Hello there. I've got some material from JG Bennett and his wife, from AR Oraj, and also from Madame de Salzman. On the way back to Paris, we visited the caves of Lascaux. Gurdjieff accepted their authenticity and antiquity, except that he put their age at 8,000 years. It was lovely to be there with him. I remember him standing with his feet apart, leaning on his stick, with his head thrown back, looking up at the great stag with the stylized antlers in the first gallery. He spoke about the horns of the deer as symbolizing the degree of attainment in the same way as the horns of Beelzebub. Indeed, on looking at the disposal of the horns, it was obvious that they were conventional and quite unlike the completely realistic oxen and horses. The curious trap drawings, he said, are letters like the Chinese, and that each has a special meaning. About 45 of them existed. He was very much interested in the composite animal at the entrance and said this was an emblem like the Sphinx and said that this was how it was in Atlantis. I remembered that he had written of the Sphinx as the emblem of the society Akaldan and realized that he implied that we had here at Lascaux the center of just such a society and that this animal was its emblem and at the same time the reminding factor for its work. I said that the prehistorians were agreed that these paintings were dated between 15,000 and 25,000 years back. G said no, not more than 8,000. I said there was evidence from the implements and bones. It is thought, I said, that they go back before the time of the loss of Atlantis. He immediately replied in a rather shocked tone, how can that be? These cannot be before the loss of Atlantis. He then remained silent, and I could get no more out of him. Well, there's some interesting things here. The trap drawings, I assume, are drawings of animal traps. Underneath the reindeer that I'll put up, there is um, a square black box that could be some kind of um, fall trap. Uh, another part was Gurdjieff indicated that he felt the symbols which were on the caves were a kind of uh, language and he mentioned Chinese symbols. That could be um, the I Ching which has 64 symbols and it's interesting that the I Ching symbols are interpreted as natural forms. They're not um, abstract representations, but you can see in the symbol itself what it means. Thunder over mountain, water under moon. There isn't anything that is completely symbolic. All symbols can be taken back to their roots in the absolute. as above, so below. I think that's called the doctrine of kinds, but kinds of different scale. What represents the water element at different scales, for instance. As for the composite animal, I did see that there was um, a painting of a reindeer, but the legs were of a man. Now, this is from A.R. Uraj. In the fifth descent, Beelzebub relates that he observed from Mars that the life of man was becoming shorter. He descended to Earth to investigate. In the then modern Babylon, the generation of the psyche of man had begun. Previous to this, the conception of science in ancient Babylon was based on the development of the normal potentialities of man. 
it was taken for granted that one of the obligations of life was the development of the second and third centers or bodies just as ordinary education is taken for granted in our time life in ancient babylon was organized for this and art literature and occupation were subordinate to it but when intuition and potentialities waned mechanical means took their place the objective scientist was supplanted by the scientist of new format who has no intuition but an amazing command of mechanical technique knowledge of all kinds was accumulated and understanding waned the new scientist became engaged as i have said in anatomizing the corpse of the universe become preoccupied with how not why seeing everything through part of the moving instinctive sector as it was then so it is now but intensified man who was a sword became twisted into a mark of interrogation well we're going through a process of terrifying mechanization right now in 2022 from jg bennett 1:30 a.m. back in paris i have watched and watched all the time in order to observe my own state the need all the time to do what one does not want and to deny oneself the things that one does want is all part of the work of establishing the second body but that is not all it is at least as important to one remain for an hour or more daily in the collected state so that crystallization can proceed and two to practice many many times a day the transfer of consciousness from the first to the second body it is quite easy to suffer up to a point but all the time there are doubtful moments need i do this i know how precarious is my hold on that separation madam de saltzman at the beginning i have a tendency to experience this sensation predominantly in the solar plexus or in the head but with the letting go the sensation expands and takes the form of a whole presence that is rooted in the abdomen gurdjieff always pointed to this place as the center of gravity of the being the point where the second body is attached to the first i let my energy flow towards the center of gravity which is a support for the entire upper part of the body it is also the support for my thought and feeling as soon as i am centered i feel my thought is free my feeling is free this presence this body of another density needs to have an action on me i must have a close relation with it for finer energy to penetrate and be absorbed a kind of space must appear in which reactions do not arise a zone of silence that allows this presence this second body to expand with its subtle vibration i need a circulation of energy that is free that is stopped nowhere i do not intervene the energy is distributed according to an order beyond my understanding this free circulation takes place through the breathing which nourishes this presence by the air bringing active elements we are not aware of this breathing is participation in the forces of the universe the second body has as its substance a finer intelligence like the physical body it requires food for its development a struggle a conscious confrontation is necessary to call an energy that would not otherwise appear when our attention is strongly concentrated in front of the various movements of our thinking feeling and body this produces a substance similar to electricity it is necessary to accumulate this material for a second body to be formed the way is long but the substance can be created in us by conscious effort and voluntary suffering the new body will then have a possibility of action on the physical body 
What is important is the continual struggle between our head and our animal, between our individuality and our functions, because we need the substance that this conscious confrontation produces. It requires effort again and again and we must not discouraged and we must not be discouraged because the result of our work comes slowly. This is interesting from De Saltzman. It sounds a lot like Taoism and Qigong and Tai Chi. All those Chinese arts are centered on the belly that they call the Tan Qian, which is the gate to the absolute below it. And it's interesting that the Salzman can locate certain functions clearly in the body. Solar plexus, the head, the abdomen. She understands the difference between these places. Many people do not. Possibly because she's a dancer and knows her body very well. This kind of exercise when you circulate the breath with no blockage anywhere is directly Taoist type of meditation. She though says that the energy is distributed according to an order beyond my understanding. That should be beyond my understanding as yet because everything can be understood but you have to want to understand it and you're, you have to provide the opportunity for your intelligence to go into new places and eventually it will learn. It will simply learn. In the same way as the Salzman can experience within her the difference between functions of a head, solar plexus and abdomen, other people cannot. Those other people maybe say it's impossible to know where it is. It's not impossible. In fact, it's very interesting because if we are to learn anything, learning is to make the impossible possible, to enter the unknown and make it known. That is a definition of learning. But if you understand what I mean, it indicates that human beings never learn. All they do is change the meaningless content of their mind. And it is meaningless. And they seek meaninglessness because they are deeply terrified of learning anything. They wish to keep things the same. Although they may talk about changing the world, saving the world, revolutions and all that, they have no wish to change at all. They have only the wish to create the illusion of change, the illusion of learning, and so they become anti-life. They live in death, and it has become their food. They are deeply confused. They have adulterated, meaning they have sugared, every single part of their functioning to such an extent that they live in a hypnotic glee, full of themselves, and cannot see straight. They need to fast, and fast a long time, to return to reality, and to remove the adulteration that is in every part of their society. We live in a society where the adulteration has been going on for a long time, and these people no longer recognise the ground, they have lost contact, but they still carry on in the same way that um, a field of wheat that has a disease. And I would say, judging by the news this morning, Britain may well enter a war with Russia. It's quite possible Britain will not exist as a country next year. Anyway, I hope you liked that and um, I wish you well.